You let me complicate you Help me Look up on my insides Help me I got no soul to sell Help me The only thing that works for me Help me get away from myself Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to try something different, to explore an arrangement here and maybe start a new series in the channel on recreating iconic songs. And for that first episode, I have chosen the intro of the song Closer by Nine Inch Nails to explore with you guys. This video will be roughly divided into two parts. On the first part, I will talk about the overall arrangement and the instruments I've used, giving you an overview of my configurations. And in the second part, I wanted to focus more in depth on the Minimoog patch for the bass line track on this song intro slash bridge here. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about my setup here. <laughs> I think my starting point to reproduce this song was the Moog DFAM because at the beginning of the song the layering of the arrangement is in a way very simple basically drum, bass and vocals but it's on the textures and the sound design that Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails really exhale, right? So let's have a look here on how I have configured my drum synth. This is a very simple patch on the DFAM that you can learn from the Moog library and that is basically turning your synth into a kick and snare synth sounds. I will leave you for a second with a configuration for my knobs here so that you can reproduce it in your DFAM if you wanted to. But let's have a listen on how this pattern sounds like. So this pattern is in essence very simple. You can see here that my velocity knobs are dictating when will the kick drum sound and what I have here is basically a kick drum in step one and a half velocity here on step two and what this will give me is a full-blown kick on step one and then a kind of a delay echo of that same kick drum and as a rhythmic response I have here my snare controlled by the pitch knob programmed for step five What allows me to do those controls over velocity and pitch knobs here are my cables set on a patch bay. I have the first connection here from the pitch output into the VCF amount and this is what will allow me to use the pitch sequencer as an input to control my noise modulation here. And my second patch is connecting the VCO envelope generator output into my noise level and that is contributing to a snappier sound on our noise snare. But this patch is in essence VCO2 tuned down to represent our kick drum and the noise as a sound source to recreate the snare sound. The third cable you see here in my patch bay is used to bring the tempo from the TR8S. So my master clock is on that drum machine. <laughs> The next layer of my arrangement was made on the Roland TR8S because I needed both the close and the open hatch sounds from more like classic sources like the 808 or the 606 from Roland. And I have decided to use the clock from the TR8 because here I have a more precise control of the BPM since on the DFAM what you have is a tempo knob that won't give you the precise BPM information. So if we have a look at my pattern here on my close hatch I have set my sequence to go from 1 to 8 to mimic the steps on the Moog DFAM and I have basically set one close hatch on every step for my pattern 1. On a second variation here that I also used in intro, what I'm doing is actually setting the open hatch 
on steps four and eight. And of course, what you hear in the background as uh, my kick drums and my snare are coming from the D fam. The only parameters that are really dialed in here into the TR8 were the decay of my instruments. And I have toned the samples down a little bit so they get the darker mood of this song. <laughs> But the real start of the show for me in this introduction is the sound design for the bass line. And for this one my synth of choice was the Minimoog that has recently returned from his repair on the aftertouch. And I think not only because the Minimoog has this such iconic analog sound to it, but it was also because of how accessible the controls I needed for that patch were in the panel here. And for this patch I wanted to go a little bit deeper on the sound design with you. So let's have a listen of how this patch sounds like. <laughs> And you can listen right away that the, the body of the sound, the core of this sound, is this auto wah effect. And because of this characteristic, I thought it would be easier to go for a synth where the architecture is already having this envelope dedicated for the filter and another envelope dedicated for the amp. If you remember, I've made a video on the channel about the wah effect and how to reproduce it, but in essence, this Y effect is done by the modulation of the filter that has a lot of resonance to it. So let's have a look. This patch is composed by two oscillators. My oscillator one set to 32 feet with a sawtooth waveform and I have cranked its volume to the maximum here on the mixer to get that saturation that is characteristic of the Moog mixer. And my second sound source is oscillator 2 here, also tuned to 32, but now set to a square wave or pulse to help me work with those low ends and that roar when we are in the very low octave there. I tried to experiment a little bit with the noise but it's not really doing something to my sound here but what really creates the characteristic is in the filter and envelope section here. So let's have a look. My filter cutoff frequency is set a little bit below minus 3 with the emphasis between 6 and 7 more towards 7 there. And then my envelope amount contour here is set just below 2. But the magic is happening when we are modulating this filter cutoff frequency using our VCF down here. And this was very interesting when I was fine tuning this patch I was playing a lot with the attack time and the decay and that's how you will get the Y effect if you have resonance to swipe through, right? My values ended up just above 10 milliseconds for the attack time and my decay time was just below the 400 here, the middle grade between two 200 and 600 milliseconds and I left my sustain value just above 2 but notice that the keyboard tracking for the filter cutoff frequency is on for both 1 and 2 meaning that the higher I go on the keyboard the more my cutoff frequency will be open by the modulation here. But it's not only that, what I realized with this sound was like the timing, the tempo that you play will also dictate how open your Y effect will be because for some of the notes he plays there you have this wider open filter and while dialing in here my attack and decay time for the VCF I was not achieving that sound until I finally realized that this had a lot to do with the tempo of playing as well. So the groove that you apply to the bass line will also be a certain control for your Y effect. I think it was Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins once talking about that like how the his effect chain and the amplifier will actually respond to his way of playing. And I got to the same conclusion on my previous video here in the channel when we talked about the Moloko song that even more for the bass lines 
this this way of playing the emphasis that you give to the different notes is what really gives the characteristics of the sound like the, the effective timber well last but not least if you want to reproduce this sound in your Moog or Moog plugin my envelope for the amplifier here has no attack to, to have that instant punch from the bass and my decay is set just below 10 milliseconds my sustain is all the way up 8.5 five more or less there for my mix i left my amplifier volume almost to the level of nine there as well an important thing to mention on the mini moog is that i have the decay mode off here so that you have this very simple envelope with just attack and decay i think the original song has more to it so i have added an extra filter modulation in post-production here and I still didn't capture the exact textures that 9 inch nails have on their studio version it is simply wonderful sound design there but I think you get the essence you get the core timber of this sound I also think that this video is a lot of first times trying to recreate a part of a song for you and this is why I thought that I needed to add vocals because it is not only the timber of the isolated patch but it's also its context on a mix that will define the frequencies that that you are using more so let's have a listen a little bit to this sound in context to the drum machine so you can hear the raw sounds ending without reverberation there the low ends that's the lowest octave that he plays and the two high notes that will give us the rhythm Initially I was thinking to do this recreation dollars just to make use of the different hardware in the, in the arrangement but what I missed in my particular setup was a good string sound that I could use and since I wanted to try a sidechain movement there to, to, to get the beat of the drums to control the string sound that is not originally played during the introduction but only on the bridge I decided to do at least the string sound in my door but like I said this was just a cherry on the cake because I really wanted to put the bass sound in context to the overall arrangement mix there okay so now i want to bring you to my daw here to show you something i did in post-production first a quick look into the effect i applied on the mini moog i will solo this track for us here you can see the final post-production sound <laughs> and what I added here are this sequence of effects but the main plugin that I wanted to talk to you about was the Mooger Fuger filter here so let's have a listen with and without the filter modulation <laughs> So see of course that the sound gets thicker and larger but again it's not only the filter modulation here it's also about the master plugins and as you can see I have a mix and reverb as well as the Mooger Fuger but what I wanted to show you is that there, are, there is more texture to the sound although I could get 80% of the sound directly from the synth and basically what, what this effect is adding to the equation there is another envelope for which the, the attack speed is uh, dictated by the slow fast mix here I have the mix parameter for the effect all the way in so it's all wet there is a, an additional drive an additional gain here or the output for the envelope and I'm applying a two pole filter with resonance try to get more of that texture we see in the original recording but the main reason why I went to the door 
was actually for the string sound. So let's have a look at my string layer here. And for the strings, what I'm using is a digital synthesizer from Arturia, the Pigments, and I'm basically relying on their preset called 7AM. This is an excellent synth to learn about envelopes and LFOs, very didactic, and it has thousands of different engines here. But since the, the, the star of the show today was the Minimoog, what I wanted with this default sound was to get the closest I could from my library so I didn't have to design all the sounds for this exercise. And what I wanted to show more in depth to you was what I meant with a side chain compression. My first idea was to use the drum sound that I have here recorded both from the DFAM and the TR8S but when trying to do so to get the rhythm from the drum kit to actually actuate on the volume of the strings I didn't achieve the sound that I wanted so what I did instead since my drum machine was already an electronic drum rhythm that is was coming directly into the beat so I didn't have to quantitize or anything I I have used this plugin called Movements by Output Audio and basically what you get here is an LFO or several layers up to four LFOs to control volume and PAM. You could also add other controls here like your filter or equalizer control but let me show you how this sounds. I will put my loop bar around the string so we can only hear to that part. So you can see here that this LFO is actually pulsating my volume and it's set to a 1 16th note because this was basically what I wanted to get. I wanted to get the close hatch to go through and make the volume in the strings to pulse. And since I didn't have on my sense a sound out of the shelf that I could bring to this arrangement to, to, to get that dissonance that creates the tension on, on the original song from Nine Inch Nails, I thought, okay, the fastest way to solve this would be in the door. But you can see from my setup that we could go all the way doorless for this composition here, for this arrangement. So that's it for this exercise. I hope this was interesting for you, same way it was interesting for me, trying out new things. Please let me know in the comments if you were interested for a specific aspect of the arrangement here that I didn't went deep enough. I tried to focus and summarize a little bit to, to keep it interesting for you. Thank you so much for the new subscribers. That's a good way for me to measure if the content is interesting or not. And as always, thanks for watching.